Hi everyone, let's talk about sensory receptor adaptation. More specifically, the difference between phasic and tonic receptors. Receptors send information to your central nervous system by firing action potentials. Well, sensory receptors are capable of adapting to constant stimuli by decreasing the amount of signals it is sending to the brain. We constantly experience the effects of sensory receptor adaptation in our everyday lives. For example, if you are resting your hand on the table, you might not be aware of the texture of the table until I pointed it out. Similarly, if you are wearing a watch, chances are you probably don't notice it for most of the day. This is because the sensory receptors in your skin has already adapted to these constant stimuli. We can use a graph to more clearly visualize how these two types of sensory receptors differ in their firing. I am going to be using the example of muscle spindles, which conveniently consists of both types of receptors. Muscle spindles are located in your skeletal muscles. I have a rough sketch of a skeletal muscle here in the middle, and muscle spindles can be found here in the skeletal muscle belly. We are going to be looking at the extension and flexion of the forearm as an example of a movement. While you can learn more about muscle spindles in my other video, you only need to know for now that sensory receptors are stimulated when muscles are lengthened. Just to recall, when we extend our forearm, our bicep here on the top is elongated and lengthened, and triceps on the bottom is contracted. This becomes the opposite when we flex our forearm. And so we can split up the movement into three parts. First, the forearm is extended but unmoving, as shown here in the first section. In the second part, the forearm is moving from the extended to the flexed position. And lastly, the forearm is flexed, but it's unmoving. Let's see how these two types of sensory receptors will respond in each section. Let's look at the sensory fibers in triceps. Here the muscle is contracted, so both types of sensory receptors are firing at their basal rate. Each line here represents one action potential. When you start to move your arm into a flexed position, the sensory receptors are going to start firing at an increased rate. The only difference here is that the phasic receptors react more quickly. Tonic receptors react much more slowly and they need more time to build up to that rate. You can see how the sensory receptors get their name. As soon as you stop moving and your forearm is held steady in the flexed position, the phasic receptors quickly return to basal rate. Meanwhile, the tonic receptors keep firing at an increased rate. These two types of sensory receptors allow for different types of information to be communicated. Phasic receptors respond and adapt quickly, so it can detect really quick changes in a stimulus. Some examples of phasic receptors are Pacinian corpuscles, which can be found in some areas of your skin. If you've ever run your hand across a wooden tabletop, or even grabbed a handful of sand, you'll know that they both have a texture to them. These minute differences are picked up in the form of vibrations. Another example of a phasic receptor is the group 1A fibers in muscle spindles that we just talked about, which pick up the rate of change in muscle length. Tonic receptors, on the other hand, adapt slowly, and so they are able to detect how long a stimulus is applied for. An example of this is another group of sensory receptors in muscle spindles, which are the group 2 fibers, sometimes called the flower spray fibers. These receptors detect how long a muscle is, as the rate of action potential increases as the length of muscle increases. They keep sending action potentials as long as the stimulus is applied. 